Alright everyone, welcome back to some more of The Great Ace Attorney 2. And it looks like we're still continuing on with the investigation, hoping we find something that could give us some good evidence to clear our good friend, Professor Harebrain's name. Although, that name is a bit, uh, odd too, but whatever, we're gonna go with it, and well, if anything else guys, we're gonna see how it goes. Hopefully y'all continue your watching, and let's keep it going. Alright guys, and we are back. So now our next up, uh, our next place to go to is the prison. Twenty third of October, local prison cell eleven. I want to say two, but that looks like two uh, ones. <laughs> What's he doing? He's oh my! The whole wall of the cell is covered in mathematical equations, and he's still running more now. Um, Professor, sorry to interrupt. Oh, ah, M Mr. Naruhodo! And who is this young lady? My name is Susato Mikotoba. I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Oh, if only! If only I met a refined young woman like you sooner! No, no, this would have happened. No, no, that's not logical. That makes no sense at all. Oh dear, I'm I'm sorry if my presence here upsets you. I owe you an apology, to Professor. I didn't manage to deliver what I promised you I would in court this morning. Oh no, 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 no! The whole thing, the whole miserable affair. It all happened because I've been such a complete and utter clot. Um, Professor Hairbrain. Hey, speed through that again. Hold on. What have you been working on yourself? Oh, <laughs> you, um, you mean that? Oh dear, how embarrassing. I, I was suddenly struck by an idea, you see, and I simply had to write down. The wall was all I had to hand. Oh, is it some new hypothesis? Something to surpass super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, maybe? Ah, no, actually. This is my autobiography. Your autobiography? How was I diddled and fiddled by Mr. Albert Hairbrain? I found I can represent my odd fortunes with only odd numbers in an ambitious set of simultaneous equations. Really? I'm going to have to pay back all my loans I took for the kinesis machine, you see. So it's going to be a new serial publication from next month, part one in an odd birth, an odd upbringing. Can't beat the man's optimism, that's for sure. I see. Well, for now, would you mind if we talked a little more about the case? Oh yes, yes, of course. I've been working through the numbers. I was diddled, I was fiddled by the pair of them. By Asmin and by the aloof engineer Drebber. We're not gonna have to sit through an explanation of all these equations, are we? Alright, let's converse with the poor guy. Everything I believe in has been turned on its head. My research, Mr. Asman, the kinesis machine, my hypothesis even. I'm sorry it's come to this. There was really no other way. No, it's not your fault. I wanted, I wanted to protect my work, but in the end, there was nothing worth protecting. It was never my intention to deceive anyone. I didn't want to trick the public. No, of course you didn't. But in court this morning, I realized something. Oh? If you've done something wrong without knowing it. You've still done something wrong logically. It makes no difference if you are aware of it or not. Ignorance is a poor excuse. The blame still lies with me. Oh, Professor. He believed in me this morning, you know. Barrack did. He believed in my hypothesis. Well, I think. That was just a necessary factor in the prosecution establishing its case. No, no. Barrack wouldn't do something like that. I'm sure he genuinely believed it. Did he? I think I understand now. Why it was that he decided to take on the prosecution in my trial, I mean. Ooh, Van Zeke's motivation. After the terrible accident happened, nobody would believe in my hypothesis anymore. Not the police, not the prosecution service, not any lawyers even. I feel like I dealt some kind of finishing blow there. So, if any other prosecutor had taken the case, if it was anyone other than Barrack, 
I'm sure the prosecution would have declared my hypothesis a complete and utter nonsense. In that case, you would have been declared a fraud yourself, Professor. Exactly, which would have been a fate worse than death for me. But Barrett insisted that I was a proper man of science from start to finish. You, you think that's why he... I know him very well indeed. He's an extremely kind-hearted soul. But that extremely kind-hearted soul... Spent all morning trying to paint you as a murderer, didn't he? Well, admittedly, that part of the analysis appears to have some flaws in it. And what about the whole Reaper side of things? How does that fit in with the kind-hearted soul idea? Do, do you think he set out to trick me from the very start? I'm sorry to say, that does seem likely, yes. When I first met him, he introduced himself as a wealthy financier. He looked over the, he looked over the proper the proper sorry he looked over the paper I'd written and said my work would benefit all humanity and must be pursued. He was an enthused, he was so empathetic, emphatic, but in reality he was the mastermind of some vast criminal network, it seems. I I still can't believe it. I always pass it. As the machine was essentially a set of decoration for some stage magic. It probably didn't require a large amount of investment actually. But the scale of it, it wasn't just some small trick. It was very elaborate via deception. All young scientists are full of hope about their burgeoning ideas, full of zeal. But none of us have any money. We want to do research, but we can't afford it. Many of us take a barely legal part-time work to try and earn just a few measly pennies to carry on. To go through all that, only to be taken for a complete fool. It's too rotten to believe. It is, I agree. And that's why we have to find those responsible and bring them to justice. Mr. Asman is no more, of course, which leaves only the engineer. Mr. Enoch Drever. Is he an engineer, or a magician, or a swindler? It, it was about a year ago when Mr. Asman first brought Drever to meet me at my laboratory. Since then, I met him many times to discuss details about the Kinesis machine. But at no point did you have any inkling that he was just an illusionist? Oh, he definitely wasn't just an illusionist. What do you mean? He was a wealth of deep scientific knowledge. There's no question that the man's a gen genuine scientist. It's instantly apparent in conversation. I see. But, he but the wretched man deceived you, Professor. It's unforgivable. We must do everything we can to find him and bring him to justice. There are no more clues you can give us as to his whereabouts. I'm sorry, we only ever discussed the Kinesis machine. Nothing else. Hmm. Although, just once. I did visit his workshop. What workshop? Drebber's enormous fabrication laboratory, where he constructed my great machine. Why? Why didn't you mention this before? Enoch Drebber's workshop. There's every chance we might find the man there. So you've been to Drebber's place of work then? Yes, just once you understand. It, it was an enormous place. Plenty of room to construct the Kinesis machine you see. Where can we find it? We have to go there at once. There's a good chance that we'll find Drebber there. Well, yes, definitely. I'm sure. As in, I'm sure you're not going to want to hear this. But I have absolutely no idea where the workshop is at all. I'm so sorry! I was more than half expecting that. You see, I was blindfolded in the carriage the entire way there. He blindfolded you? He wasn't taking any chances then. The place was incredible! The pinnacle of modern engineering! The, even the oil he used was the very best! A special French machine of all that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Ah, the indescribable scent of the imported oil. Performers across the world should forget their secret formula and use that instead. What do you think, Mr. Sato? You know the machine for the next birthday? I've never used any kind of perfume, Mr. Narahodo, and I'm not sure I'd like to start with that. I don't suppose you know even a part of the workshop's address, Professor? You don't have a business card from Mr. Drebber, for example. The man was very. Ah! Ah! Yes, I do. He gave me his business card once. It's right here.
let me see that. Throw etiquette to the wind, why don't you? Enoch Drebber, engineer. I'm afraid that's all it says. There's no address. No. Oh well. I can't say I'm surprised. Still, this could be useful. Alright, well, let me examine it then. You may not know what happened, but I gotta check it for myself. Alright, uh... What the heck is this? There's dark smudge here. I think perhaps it's machine oil. Ah, yes, possibly. Professor Hairbrain mentioned something about the oil dripper he uses, didn't he? He said it was specially imported very high quality oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Yes, that's right. But more importantly, that that's more fragrant than the finest perfume. So, excuse me a moment. Oh, it doesn't appear to have any scent at all. Don't worry, I expect that just because there's a, such a tiny amount on here. Okay, cool. I think we should leave. And I think we'll present it to, uh, Gina. About this, Gina. Yeah, I'm still learning my letters at the moment. I know only A to E. Ah, actually, Gina, it's back at the card that's important. Let me see what she said that I missed out on. So if it ain't too much bleeding trouble, oh. Eh, I'll come. There's just a dirty old smudge in the back, that's all. It turns out that this very high quality French machine oil. It has a very particular scent, apparently. You don't say. Let's have a whip then. You sure? I don't smell nothing. No, no, we didn't mean that you should smell it. Oh, right! You mean Toby! Uh-oh. His sense of smell is so good he can track people over the oceans, can he? I keep doing that. Hold on. Professor Hairbrain informs us that this oil is unique to Mr. Drebber's workshop. There you go. I think he's picked up a scent. So you mean if he follows the scent of this oil, Toby could lead us to the Dodgy Co's workshop. That's right. That's exactly what we're hoping. Alright then, we'll give it a go. I'll just borrow that. What? Wait, when did you... Once a pickpocket. If I can lead everyone to that Drebber's workshop, I'll be the boss's boss before next week. Sure, you'll be glad like you promised. Like you were promoted. Poor, poor Gregson. Right then, Otto. Leave it to me. Alright, guys. We're gonna get going after that Dodger Engineer Cove right this minute. Oh, but hang on. Someone's supposed to be on guard duty here all the time. I'm afraid we can't help. We need to get on with our investigation as well, Gina. Oh, right. Oh well, never mind. It ain't gonna be me what gets in the neck. You'll be the boss. Poor, poor Gregson again. Ready, Toby? Got that OSN, have ya? Come on then. See you later. I do hope the scent of that oil leads into the swindler's workshop. Yes, I hope so too. Ideally before the dog swims across the channel to France. Well, I think we've done all the investigating we can here for now. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Dreb- Wow, Drebber. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then, do you think we ought to try to speak with Mr. Sholmes at this point? 
We have things to discuss and I'm dying to meet him again after all these months. Yes, it's quite possible he might know something useful. You're right. We ought to find him at Madame, Madame Tuspel's. He's supposed to be working there as a temporary waxwork exhibit. Yes, Iris told me all about his latest unusual venture. Alright then, let's go there. Honestly, I was planning on going there earlier. Madame Tuspel's. Twenty third of October, Madame Tuspel's Museum of Waxworks. Oh my! No wonder it's called the House of Horrors. I'd like to turn on my heels and go straight home via the confectionery. Being scared makes you crave sweets. I can understand that. But you know, there's something about the waxwork over there. It looks exactly like Mr. Shum's down to the very last detail. Aha! What is it? Oh, sorry. I think you'll find... That's the temporary waxwork himself. Ah, the friend of my dedicated employee. Oh, yes, hello again. It's Ryonosuke. Ryonosuke Narahodo. I must say, I'm quite spellbound by the great detective. He is a marvel. My precious waxwork is already back where it belongs. You... You don't mean... But yes, the mystery is solved already. Wow, Mr. Shumsky really engages brain when he's hungry enough. So as you can see, he has returned to his habitual duties. Yes. His habitual duties? Allures. Do not disturb, huh? Poor Susato-san, she looks very perplexed. Alright, well let's talk to him. We really do need to speak with Mr. Sholmes and I'm, lo I'm longing to say hello again. But where is he? I think you might find that he's quite nearby actually. Oh! What, what do you... Indeed my dear fellows, it is I! The world famous great detective and waxwork, Herlock Sholmes. Susato-san! Susato-san! Nope, she fainted. My most humble apologies. I thought I'd died and gone to eternal paradise for a moment, via London. My dear madam, allow me to make amends by offering you a tasty free deduction at some point. As long as it's not off a of questionable street food quality. I don't understand. Why are you working as waxwork here, Mr. Sholmes? Merely a secret identity, you understand. Though the case is largely solved now. Largely solved? We're talking about the waxwork abduction, I presume. Indeed we are, my good fellow. As you predicted, it was as easy as proverbial pie. Though I confess I'm yet to partake of pie, proverbial or otherwise, or any food for far any food so far today for that matter. That stomach rumble echoed th around the whole museum. How did you manage to solve it so quickly? Ah, well, do remember I said it was largely solved. Anyway, I simply negotiated with the culprit. Are you familiar with the so-called telephone? Oh yes, it's a most modern invention, allowing you to hold a conversation with people far away. In Japan, only the imperial capital and a handful of other cities are connected as yet. This morning, a telephone call was received here from the, per the perpetrator of the abduction. As such, I was able to negotiate terms and in the end, the wax truck was returned. That's amazing! Just between you and I, it would appear that the culprit had always intended to return to the stolen wax truck at any event. Oh, but I could I thought whoever was responsible was the man at ransom too. Sorry, no. Yes, I think perhaps. The ransom of the man was necessary to avoid unwanted suspicion regarding the true motive. But, does that not mean... the negotiating was entirely unnecessary? A fact that I must ask you to keep from Madame Tuspels at all costs. 
hungry young Irish and wish my return to Baker Street after all. Poor Iris. Now then, do I sense that you have some business with this great waxwork? We're in the process of trying to track somebody down. Oh? Yes, a man by the name of Enoch Drebber. He's the swindler who duped Professor Hairbrain and the engineer who built the Kinesis machine. Swindler and an engineer. Quite the modern man. He also seems to be a conjurer of sorts too, with considerable knowledge of stage magic. We really need to locate him before the trial resumes tomorrow morning. But we have so few clues to go on that that's the trouble. Do you have any good ideas? I have no data yet. It is a, it is a capital mistake to have good ideas before one has data. If I knew something of the man's appearance at least, I may be in a better position to help. Yes, Jebra's appearance. Fortunately for you, however, presently I have little to occupy myself and little to fill my stomach. And as soon as you find any clue, no matter how small, I should gladly give you my thoughts on it. Hmm, okay. Hold on. Mr. Sholmes, would you cast your eyes over this photographic print? It's of Mr. Enoch Drever. The face of the engineer we seek. Well, all Englishmen look broadly the same, of course. So looking at the photograph won't be particularly instructive. Are you alright, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, yes, forgive me. Very interesting, this. Very interesting indeed. What's wrong, Mr. Sholmes? You've quite you turned quite pale all of a sudden. Hmm. Hold on a second. Ah yes, the heavy currents in the middle of the House of Horrors. What's on the side of them, you know, it's just going to be terrifying, don't you? The sign says it's Madame Tuspel's special exhibit. It seems you have to pay extra to go inside. I know! Can you believe that? Pay more money as if we haven't been scared enough already? It's not my doing, Mr. Narahodo. Alright, second. Mr. Sholmes, did you lie to us? My dear Mr. Narahodo, stay that piercing stare. What is this about? Alright guys, I'm going to have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're going to continue this whole conversation with Mr. Sholmes and about Kazuma.